Welcome to Everyone I Know, the podcast where we argue about the mundane. We're here again in Troy, but not everyone. Ooh, you'll find out what that means in just a moment. <laughs> I'm here with my producer, Brendan. Hello. And I'm here with my brother, Chris. What's going on, guys? I was drinking a little bit of water there for a second. Gotcha. Caught you <laughs> slipping. Oh, <laughs> uh, Poorly timed. <laughs> we got a big boy guest for you guys this week. All the way from the country of Norway. Yeah. We've got Jan Eriksson, everybody. <laughs> Jan Eriksson. Jan, Jan Eriksson. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you're the first guest with his own theme song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm honored. <laughs> How are you doing yeah. today, Jan? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm uh, Jan Eriksson, and uh, I'm an artist from Norway. And I'm currently getting some traction because of my Instagram account, mm. where I draw things, and that's why I'm on your show, I guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you guys don't know Jan by name, you definitely know him by sight. Uh, yeah, no. His videos are very unique, and uh, I, I love them. I watch them every day. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're, they're very funny. Uh, we watched the uh, uh, the the Origami Diaries, I think it is, Jan. The one where you you make the 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 whale at the end of it. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a really good one. If you haven't seen yeah. that one, it's great. Um, so once again, Jan, thank you so much for uh, coming on our program. Yeah, we appreciate it, Jan. Um, yeah, no problem. So you're in Norway right now. We just established it's about five o'clock over there. Yep. Yeah, it's true. It's a uh, eleven o'clock in Albany, New York. <laughs> A.M. I'm a little AM. tired still. Uh, Chris, Chris, uh, don't talk to me till I've had my coffee. Chris Powers is here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're just going to ask you some interview questions, and yep. uh, I, I, because I really do want to get to know you. I mean, yeah. I see, we, I watch these videos all the time, and you know, you don't speak in them, so mm. I think that it's, it's. First of all, it's great to hear your voice. And know, you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're a person, not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so you, do you live in Oslo right now? Yes, I do. How do you yeah. like it there? I mean, right now it's very cold, but uh, usually it's uh, good. But uh, it could uh, be somewhere else in the winter part of the year, yeah. Um, did you... Okay, so I, I looked at your, your bio on your website. Um, you were born in Oslo? Yes. Okay, and then you went to uh, art school in... Oslo. <laughs> Oslo, okay. But there, there's <laughs> two... What's the uh, Oscar Kunskol... It's just uh, another art school straight outside of Oslo. So, okay, uh, okay. So it's yeah. like uh, more of a like a suburb area. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I uh, how did you? I, like, so do you have? I would imagine that you probably have some uh, some partialness to Oslo. Like, do you like that as a city? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if you want to go to art school in Norway, I mean, uh, it's uh, capital, so that's where the best schools are. So that's cool. no reason to move if you're not going to go out to the country. So that's the main reason for that. Nice. Um, when you when you were going to school, did you always uh, specialize in like visual art, you know, uh, like performance uh, type art? Yeah, and, and mostly in art school, I actually did uh, more sculpture and installation stuff. Okay. The, uh, but I would like the things you see I make in my videos now. Mm-hmm. So it was just more like my uh, my sculpture started moving, so I started to film them sort of. <laughs> Nice. So that's, uh, but I've always been very, very inspired by performance art. So that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's actually something I, I'm, I'm curious about is, is what, so you started your main area for your starting was in sculpture. What moved you to put yourself into the, the videos and into the, into the art itself? I mean, I mean, all my first of my uh, art videos, I wasn't actually in the videos. You could mm-hmm. see my hands and you could maybe see my feet, but you, you never saw my face and I didn't really want to be in my videos. But then it's, I just, I couldn't be avoided. <laughs> and I was, gotcha. uh, in this Instagram project, I just wanted to go full on, just to not care anymore or more about things like that and just be, be in front of camera. So, 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 so yeah. is, is that why uh, um, you like had the tin foil over your face in some of the videos and all that stuff? Because you're still trying to yeah. like, like, yeah, like, yeah. So <laughs> they're going back. Just they yeah, have. I don't want them to be in front of camera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta yeah. say, I gotta say, some some of your videos they're they're all very cathartic. Um, they're fun to watch. I, I have to ask you, 
you, have you hurt yourself? Because I was watching the one origami video yesterday, and right. I saw your hand was bandaged up a little bit. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's definitely got to be some the, outtakes or something like that. Yeah, in the origami video, I was going. That that was quite brutal one. So that in, in that one, I actually sprained my wrist. But, oh wow! Uh, yeah, in the in all the uh, Instagram videos, I haven't really hurt myself. Uh, really? So that, yeah. <laughs> You gotta suffer for art. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I figure if I was doing something like that, I would have I would have lopped off a finger by now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's sort of dangerous, but not, not at all. If, as long as you take your time, it's like it, it, it's more silly than dangerous. So, yeah. <laughs> That's actually uh, something that we were, we were wondering about: is do, is the appearance of danger in the videos? Is that an important part of the the art itself? It, like. Do you want the audience to think that it's possible that you could be hurt, you know, doing these? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, but I mean, if they look closely, they see that. I mean, it's not that dangerous. Like people <laughs> freak out of, uh, over anything. It's like me crushing my head and I'm crushing crackers at my head. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're going to break your nose. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't don't smash the crackers too hard and you'll yeah. be okay. <laughs> it's like, it's not that dangerous, but yeah. Um, you wear ear protection in, in some of the, uh, videos, like when you pop, pop balloons and stuff like that. Uh, is that, is that as strictly a safety thing or is that part of the, the, uh, aesthetic of the, of the video? I, I mean, I started wearing them because I was popping the balloons and it started to hurt my ears because the acoustics in my studio. So, I mean, I mm-hmm. had this loud ringing in my ears because of the balloons. So it mm-hmm. was at necessity, but I think it's quite fun to yeah, it's, uh, it's, people. It's, it's, so people get pissed off because I, I'm wearing air protection. I was like, why? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's another really good question. So like not, not, not to, cause you, you, I know you really shouldn't like investigate art cause that maybe takes away from some of the, uh, um, the meaning behind it. But are, are you going for catharsis? Are you going for a silliness? Are you going for whatever makes somebody feel something or, or like, is, is it just kind of just trying to be silly? I mean, I'm not trying to think too much when I do it. Perfect. So that, that's kind of the main thing mm-hmm. when I started doing this project was like stop thinking too much because in all my other projects, I've like spent uh, like months planning and then doing it and then and then maybe a year later exhibiting it. And then now I just wanted to like just, OK, I have an idea. I'll just run and do it and then think afterwards. And that, yeah. that's, it's that's like- how now <laughs> reminds awesome. us of uh, a little bit of what we do i yeah, mean we, what we, do. <laughs> we we've done stuff before where we've planned and planned and planned and yep. planned and sometimes it doesn't work out and it's like heartbreaking when when you've yeah, yeah. planned that much but like if you're just running gunning you know just putting it out there and and yeah. and you get some really great stuff well, you know you're also not like invested in it so it's it's easy to just be like oh well, that didn't work it didn't work on to the next thing right and yeah. you can even roll with those you know things and and and, and something beautiful can come from that you know the yeah. the if you do fail um what was i going to say actually i you you said something about your uh, your studio space i really want to ask you about that now i need you to confirm or deny something for me are yep. you allowed to leave the <laughs> practice space it, do no, you I, need help <laughs> i'm never allowed to leave the space no, <laughs> no I, I leave it frequently it's uh, i don't need help <laughs> um where where is it? Is it is it near your house? Is it like in town? Yeah, it's in the city center, uh, more or less. So it's like a fifteen minute walk from from where I live. Oh, cool. Um, do you uh, like? Okay, so you obviously you're breaking stuff in there. You're you're making a mess. Is it like is cleaning it kind of a part of the process of making the video? Yeah, it's not a part I like, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's unavoidable. I have to clean a lot. Yeah. Uh, have to have this one clean uh, part of the studio where I can film, so uh, that's a big part of it. And uh, I have all this clutter in the other part of the studio that no one sees. But uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering because every time yeah. I look in there, I mean, it looks it's like pristine. it's pristine. Yeah, yeah. It, lo- it looks like an Apple yeah. store in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it, this one corner of my studio, <laughs> and then it's like stuff everywhere else. Gotcha. So, yeah, <laughs> is it like um, uh, the project that you did at Swarm? Uh, but like in just the, in the corner with all the yeah. all the broken pieces. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, 
is it so is it important for you to have a um a white studio like as like kind of like a blank canvas type effect yeah i, I, I think i need that because I, I actually did try to do this uh to performances outside the, the summer and it didn't work that well because yeah, it was too much uh noise in the background mm. visually mm. So you kind of need that uh, blank space also to give mm. it that kind of art stamp sort of <laughs> I feel like if uh, if you were bra- doing your videos in like in my apartment, it would just kind of look like a crazy person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you've got like a studio apartment and like yeah. carpeted floors or something. <laughs> and, and in my studio, it's kind of like my frame. If you, it, it kind of puts everything in place. So. Mm-hmm. Um. It t- to me, it, like okay, so uh, a little bit uh, information. You, probably don't know about me i i i'm i work in the sciences I, i'm a grad student and so to me like i i, I watch your videos and it kind of feels like you're like a scientist like in a room right. trying to get some kind of result and like testing and testing and testing and testing yeah uh, but that's kind of how i feel there's just it, it, there's uh, no end result <laughs> 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 that's like some of my favorite like uh of your videos is where, where you do something you pop a balloon or, or you break something or or you have like the tinfoil on and something just falls and you're just like all right and just turn around and walk away <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. kind of in that same vein too uh the materials you use so so we've kind of talked about it a little bit so you see yeah. there's a spaghetti i like the spaghetti a lot um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the balloons, the crackers, is there any like particular one that you like more that you like less? Is a particular like type of balloon you like to pop more like a color or something? Chris, like that? Chris, Chris has a conspiracy theory. They, the yellow is your favorite color of balloons to pop. Well, <laughs> yellow is a good color. <laughs> I was right. Uh, I, I like to use the brighter colors cause mm-hmm. it gives it more like uh, fun uh, feel to it, but, uh, I don't really think too much about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the good thing about balloons is no uh, no mess to clean up yeah. afterwards or not as much mess at mm-hmm. least yeah. so uh, I mean spaghetti and all the other ones are quite messy uh, <laughs> yeah um you got some feedback yeah I uh, so I uh, what was I going to say? Uh, so what it, you've incorporated, I've seen lately in the, in the most recent videos that you've incorporated some newer um, materials like uh, f- like flour and what look like yeah. Ritz crackers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is there is there a um, maybe a purpose for um, like food based products versus like everyday products like uh, cooking products like uh, like tin foil and, and that kind of stuff? I mean, uh, I, I choose my uh, uh, materials out of uh, kind of what breaks easily, mostly. And, okay. uh, and th- that is never really thought too much about them other than that. It's just, okay, I so look at spaghetti and I was like, okay, this will uh, look very good when it breaks. And that, <laughs> that's like the main reason. And, but now with the crackers, that was because I was uh, sick for a week and I was almost <laughs> only eating crackers I was so <laughs> living, I ate and I was so sick of them so I was <laughs> lying in bed looking at those crackers and I thought I, I want to crush them with my head <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's actually a really interesting yeah. like okay so so the your external your world outside of the studio kind of invades and comes yeah. in do you find uh, do you find yourself looking at the world at everyday objects in a different way now that you've been doing this for a year? <laughs> Bet I could crush yeah. that with my head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I've been working for that like that for like the old, old time. I've been an artist. I've been using everyday materials, so mm-hmm. I always had this eye for it. what. How can I use these things in a different way? And that's kind of been a big part of my art, it's like uh, how to use things you see every day in a completely new way that you haven't thought of before. Uh, um, so it, it's, it's like you're transforming an object, you know, no longer is this a, sal- a saltine cracker. This is now, you know, it's, it's a piece of art. Um, yeah, it, I think that that's really interesting. It, it kind of uh, reminds me of like, like one of the things that we do on this show is looking at the, like the, like our tagline is the podcast where you argue about the mundane. And yeah. to me, it, it's, it's, there's so much beauty in everyday things in, you know, for you, it's it's everyday items, and for us, it's just everyday yeah. thoughts and feelings and that kind of yeah. stuff. That's interesting. Um, 
Do you know the artist? Uh, yeah, he's an American artist, but um, Rube Goldberg. I think there's there's a British one, a guy that did similar stuff to him. Um, I forget his name. Hold on one second. Um, well, he's he's the guy that makes like the the extremely elaborate contraptions uh, to like yeah pour, he, like he, pour he, like a thing yeah uh, yeah. Uh, so I always thought of kind of my work as like a Rube Goldberg contraption, just one. You, you just have the one. It's <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. like w- one part of it. Like the rest, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that destroyed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a machine that breaks crackers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I. Uh, d- so like DIY, like do it yourself stuff. I- is that yeah. important? to your art like do you try to use mostly materials that you put together like a lot of the times i'll see the stuff that you make and it's like you know you have like a hinge that has a hammer with a knife on it and it spins around or something like that and is that like for one thing i want to know are you crafty around the house like are if if a cabinet breaks can you fix it (laughs) no (laughs) no i'm not really that uh, handy uh uh, in in the beginning, my art was all about uh, me being kind of mad about not being handy, so I, I, I destroyed <laughs> things instead. But then I started to like have an interest in the handy part, and then I started to become more crafty, and then I started to be able to make stuff because I was <laughs> because of my art. And then now I'm kind of semi handy, <laughs> but I don't really have the patience to make things. Uh, really good so i i I, almost almost every time i make something is always always something wrong with it (laughs) well that kind of that kind of um uh, speaks to the art though because everything that you do is it's it's imperfect and i I think that's maybe part of the thing that you're kind of trying to go for that uh that that it's uh i i like the one that you did um it's uh an artist tries to be athletic i think and gets punished for it oh fight song yeah yeah fight song or whatever with getting hit with uh, banana peels right was that yeah, it? yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> that's hilarious. And like a boxing glove and all yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like that. That was uh, the one project I did before I started the Instagram one. So mm-hmm. uh, that, yes, I made all these exercising sizing machines yeah. uh, myself, and then uh, included some form of pun- punishment in uh, all of them. <laughs> so uh, and yeah, that those were more difficult to make and took a lot of time. But uh, yeah. yeah. That actually, it's another thing. I, I think most people just know you from the Instagram stuff. Um, you should really just check out uh, Jan's uh, website that's got a lot of other things that you wouldn't see on the Instagram, right? Yeah, janhakan.com. Is it Hakan or Hakan? Uh, janhakun.com. Hakun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've looked at the Norwegian words. <laughs> and what I've found is I took ger- a little bit of German in high school. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so there's some similarities there. And so like for me, when it comes to Norwegian words and same thing with, with German words is that they're not yeah. terribly hard to pronounce until they are, in which case yeah. they're <laughs> nearly impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so... Do you have any interest in like engineering and stuff and things like that? Because like to me, when I see your your art, like it feels precision. At least yeah. I would want it to be precision if I had <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know a knife coming down <laughs> next to my head. To yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I have an interest in engineering, but I have no interest in becoming an engineer. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I yeah. Just, I hear you. Yeah, so. I think it's fascinating, and uh, but uh, yeah, I I, I'll, I just want things to work sort of. Not to <laughs> yeah. but it would it would take away from it if if it didn't if it wasn't just a little bit like janky, yeah. a, a little bit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the imperfects. Yep. Do you do you have any interest in like industrial? Um, like videos and stuff like for what comes to mind uh, for me is I don't know if you've seen this show or not, but uh, it's called How It's Made. Um, and they did just, they show like factories, like how products and stuff that, you know, are made in, in the factory setting, but does like an industrial feeling, uh, like do anything for you? I mean, uh, I'm interested in it sort of, but I don't seek it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, no. Um, Oh, go go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, a question I had, do you listen to like any like type of music or anything like that to kind of get you in the mood to get pumped up to pop some balloons? It all depends. Uh, I mean, uh, from day to day, 
uh, sometimes I, I can just uh, listen to mellow stuff, but sometimes it's uh, full on gangster rap, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, actually, uh, I wanted to talk about Instagram because, um, you know, I, I, I contacted you through Instagram because I noticed yeah. that you were, you responded to some comments and I was like, yeah. okay, well, uh, you know, I, I, I've sent people DMS before on that kind of stuff. And sometimes it's a little dicey. Um, yeah. but do you, do you, you, re, you, do you read your comments and like, look at the responses that you get from people? Yeah. Yeah. I try to go through my comments and uh, look at them, but it's getting harder and harder to answer them. But uh, I try to answer some of them, but, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, th there's so many comments now. But in the, in the beginning, I, I started. I tried to like answer all of them, but that uh, quickly <laughs> proved to not be a good strategy. So, um, do you do you find that like is into engaging with people on it like is that maybe another level to the project to like, uh, you know, to enhance the experience? Yeah, I think so. I think it makes everything better uh, mm -hmm. with, the, with the comments. I mean, I obviously didn't plan it because I never knew it would happen, but uh, it's become an integral part of uh, my whole project, I think. What's your, like, do you, is there, like, a particular type of response that you might get from people where people are like, oh, my God, that's crazy, or, like, that kind of thing? Do you have, like, a favorite response that people send you? I mean, I, I get kind of tired of all responses that are on repeat. So yeah. <laughs> there's like so many that goes on and on every every day, mm -hmm. uh, again and again. So it's like, even though it's like it, the first time you hear, hear someone call you genius, it's like, wow, that, oh, thanks for the compliment. But <laughs> uh, like when you hear it for a hundred times, it's like, ah, I'm not a genius. Come on. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, I think that like. When I, when I watch your videos, I, there's some part of me that gets some part of my brain that gets activated and I don't, I, I think where the, you get that response and people are like, this guy's a genius. It, it, it's because you have the keys to a certain part of your, the person's brain that they don't yeah. really know is there. It, it's, it's, it's some, some, some piece of catharsis, some piece of just like escapism or something yeah, like, yeah. like if, if you, you know, I, I work in an office and. And I'll, I'll, I'll watch one of those videos. I'm like, all right, well, everything's okay now because he was able yeah. to pop that fucking balloon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the project is my escapism, so that it works for other people like that. That's a really good thing. And maybe it's not that weird since it works that way for me as well. I, I just I always just find when I watch it, I'm like, why? I, I, I just want to like, because I don't know, maybe it's like a scientific background or whatever, but like, I want to boil down the, the component parts of why it makes me so happy to yeah, watch. Yeah, but that would take videos. away from it though. I know it would, but I'm a scientist. And I have to it. ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put it in a pill. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any, was there any like memorable responses? I remember seeing, I can't remember what it was, but it was some some other big Instagram account or something uh, like reposted one of your things and said like, what did balloons do to this man? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I, I get things like that all the time, but uh, yeah, I, I think that was nine gag or something that said that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, okay. I, I think, I think it's like funny when people send me DMs or mails and ask really nicely, oh, can we use your stuff and post it online and say, okay, yeah, and they're so nice. And then they throw in something like that. Like, well, what did balloons do to this man? I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're kind of being, uh, yeah, I, I can imagine that might be a little frustrating where you're like, you have a concept in your head and then yeah. just like farts.com <laughs> takes it. And <laughs> um. I want to, okay, I think it's, it's time that we, we learn a little bit more about you personally. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. okay. So I uh, want you tell us a little bit, I f feel like I'm interrogating you now. Sorry. <laughs> but let's, I'll take it back one notch. Do, yeah. do you have, do you have siblings? Uh, what's, what's your like family like growing up? Um, uh, yeah, I have two brothers. So yeah, uh, and they are a bit older than me. So, uh, one's an artist and one is a musician. Oh, so, oh, cool. uh, yeah, so I uh, obviously followed uh, in the artist's footsteps from uh, my oldest brother. So, uh, yeah, I um, had a happy childhood. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's the age difference between you and your brothers? Uh, my oldest brother is nine years older than me, and uh, the, the one in the middle is six years older than me. So, 
It's a nice uh, spread. So it's yeah, like it's one person's. Spread. Well, I, I guess you guys yeah. probably don't have. Do you, you have something similar to like high school, junior high, and 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 grade school, right? In, in yeah, Norway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, like, so you kind of have one person in each step of yeah. the education. Yeah, 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 we did actually. <laughs> yeah, because that that's how it was with me and Chris. Because Chris was he was leaving high school as I was coming in. He was leaving. He was getting into high school when I was going into junior high. Yeah, yeah. Um. So you obviously you speak English in Norwegian. Um, yeah. Do you speak any other languages? I mean, I was supposed to learn German in school, but I don't really speak it that well. <laughs> no, not all, really. <laughs> it's okay. You know twice as many languages as me and Chris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you to the American educational system. I thought it took a little yeah. Spanish. You knew a little Spanish 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I tried to learn Spanish for Duolingo or something, and that didn't yeah. really work. <laughs> yeah. Duolingo is... Um, it's, it's stress inducing that little bird yeah. pops up and he's like yeah. hey yeah. yelling at you all the time it's like hey shit. how much spanish do you know today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh you're nice and calm you know you're relaxing hey yeah. <laughs> como te yeah. llamos <laughs> que pasa bro <laughs> Actually, I, I managed to finish the game, but when <laughs> I, I had gotten all the levels, I was like, I still don't know Spanish. <laughs> that didn't, I just got good at the game, so it was just frustrating. You're in, you're in Spain and you're confused why everyone's not a little bird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you speak more about the manzana? <laughs> um, do, you, do you like to travel? Do you travel often? I mean, I don't travel that often, but I mean, uh, every summer, summer vacation. Yeah. So uh, I got uh, two kids, so we go on some uh, summer vacation every year. Oh, that's great. Um, I do, actually, this is, I don't know if this is, once again, I, I feel like I'm interrogating you and that I might have like uh, investigated you a little bit too hard, but I looked on your CV, I figured out you just turned 40. How do you feel about yeah. that? Yeah, and I'm, uh, this is uh, sort of my midlife crisis going on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's constructive at least, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, destructive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's constructive through destruction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I-, I noticed personally in a lot of your videos you're wearing Nikes, and you're a Nike yeah. guy. I'm a Nike guy too. Chris, show yeah. him your shoes. I can show you my shoes. So. <laughs> I got the, uh, what do I got? I got? I got the SBs right now. Uh, yeah. SBs. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it, I always wear Nikes. Yeah. It, I've been wearing Nikes forever. Kind of an evil company, but that's okay. Yeah. They yeah. Ma- they they got a fun logo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they comfortable <laughs> shoes. Is there a particular yeah. kind that you like? Do you like like low top ones? Do you like high top ones? Or. Yeah, I always wear wear like the most comfortable ones. Mm. The most. Uh, yeah. Cushion. Yeah. <laughs> It was like the, the SPs are like the 6.0s or something like that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I think is it almost time for a game? I think it might be time for. Want to play a game, yeah. Jan? Okay. I want to play a game. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I I sent you an email. I briefly described this, but for the listening audience at home, um, what we're gonna play today? Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta get. I gotta get into character. Oh, it's time for everyone I know trivia champions international edition. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do? <laughs> my brother just wants to be a game show. Host. I listen any excuse yeah. to do game show stuff. I love. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is I've got questions about Norway and I've got questions about the USA, and I'm gonna ask Chris questions about Norway. If he gets it wrong, it'll yeah. go to you. If yeah. and I'm gonna ask you questions about the USA, and if you get it wrong, it goes to Chris. And we'll figure out okay. points along the way. Um, I've got five questions e- each, but I don't know if we'll get to every single one. It depends on yeah. how much time they take. So we'll see. Um, the categories that we have are geography, film and TV, mm. music, mm. sports, mm. and science and technology. I'm going to lose so bad. It's okay. They're not. Um, some of them are adjacent to the, t- <laughs> the topic. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jan, since you are our guest, you... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting into... Uh, uh, game show for uh, yeah. voice now, uh, Jan. Because you're our guest, you're gonna go first. What category would you like? Uh, music. Was that one of them? <laughs> yeah, yes. that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The music in America. American music styles have been have made impacts on a world on the world at large. Okay, I can't read. <laughs> Gospel, jazz, 
Country music, R&B, and many more contemporary forms are all credited to the vibrant musical community in the United States. America also claims many of the manufacturers of musical in- instruments. Which of the following is not an American company? A. Gibson. B. Shure. C. Moog. D. Fender. Or E. Roland. This is a hard question. Yeah, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Bre- Brendan knows. Uh, B. You're going with B. Shure. That is incorrect. Chris, would you like to steal? Uh, sure. Um, it's not sure. That's yeah, what Jan yeah, just no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is an American uh, company? You have Gibson, Shure. Not Moog, an American company, right? Not an American company. Gibson, Shure, Moog, Fender, or Roland? Um, Roland. Roland is correct. Hey! hey. From Japan. <laughs> Uh, I was yeah. I was gonna do Yamaha, but that's a little bit obvious. Yeah, that was that yeah, pretty easy. Th- that one I would have got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's one point for Chris. Now, Chris, we're going to your Norwegian question. Norwegian music. Do you want to do me Norwegian? Yeah, music? yeah. Well, we'll do it like that. <laughs> okay, we'll do it like that. <laughs> Norway as a country has given the world many fantastic musicians from the romantic composers such as Edvard Grieg, folk musicians like Adrian Ian, and international pop stars like Aha, Take On Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a musical form invented in Oslo that bears the namesake of its home country is Norwegian black metal. The story of the inception of Norwegian black metal is intriguing and extreme, but not as extreme as these band names. Which of the following is not a Norwegian black metal band name? (laughs) All right. A. Gorgoroth. B. Mayhem. C. Tormenth. D. Burtsum. Or E. Dark Throne. I'm going to go with D, that one. D Dark Throne is incorrect. Jan, to steal the question, which is not a Norwegian black metal band name? Is it A Gorgoroth, B Mayhem, C Torment, or D Burtsum? It can't be Dark Throne because Chris already got that wrong. Yeah, it's uh, Torment. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it's not what black metal sounds like, but putting that aside. Give me a rendition I'm really of it. I'm really disappointed in, in Chris. For I don't listen this to a lot of black metal. Those were like the easiest black metal band. Yeah, they're yeah. like you the, should have known that those existed like just by hearing them. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Those were the like uh like incept like the 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 base the first people yeah um uh, but brendan's very I, I listen to metal and i don't listen to black metal but brendan's very yeah. disappointed in me black metal's dope though yeah. i mean like they they, they invented like the corpse makeup and stuff yeah. um those those guys were, were hardcore for sure yeah. uh, they were. <laughs> <laughs> um okay i uh, so i guess since you both stole i guess either one of you guys will default to jan again because he's our guest yep. jan what question <laughs> what category would you like to do geography film and tv music oh music's already been done sports or science and technology uh film and tv film and tv Hollywood, California is one of the leaders in motion picture production internationally. The sign has gone, the Hollywood sign has gone through few iterations, formally reading Hollywood land in 1923 when it was an advertisement for a segregated housing area. Yikes. (laughs) Over the following decades, the sign fell into decay, but was restored in 1978, which of, uh, with each letter of the Hollywood sign being sponsored by a different donor. Which was not a donor to the Hollywood sign. Where did you sign? get this question? <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> this this game show is sponsored by Wikipedia. Uh, there's actually it, okay. So the, the funny thing about this question is that the the people who did it are kind of interesting. Okay, so basically each letter of the Hollywood sign, somebody sent gave like thirty thousand dollars or whatever to to restore it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the question the answers are a Warner Bros. Records, b Alice Cooper schools out. Um, <laughs> C. Hugh Hefner, the uh, founder of Playboy magazine, or D. John Travolta, the guy from Greece. 
I mean, did Alice? No, I can't. Alice Cooper did he can't have done that. <laughs> what what'd you say? Yeah, yeah, Alice Cooper. Alice, Alice, Cooper. Alice Cooper. That is incorrect. What? Good, 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 good. <laughs> Alice Cooper did donate. Of course he, he did. <laughs> he donated in the name of Charlie Chaplin, who apparently is his friend. I don't know. It was his friend. He uh donated the um Oh, one of the letters he said, he said, you can have the E for my name or something like that. So that was interesting. <laughs> All right. That was very interesting. All right, All right, Chris. Is it A, Warner Brothers, C, Hugh Hefner, or D, John Travolta? John Travolta. John Travolta is correct. Uh, he doesn't have any money. They're winning. He, he, <laughs> we're he, well, actually, uh, yeah, we're no, tied right now. Well, you're up yeah, one. Yeah, but this yeah. round's still going. Um, yeah, so I picked John Travolta because this is 1978. That's when Grease came out. Yeah. Um, I'm very surprised that both of you are getting any of these questions right. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chris, Norwegian uh, film and television. Okay. The Norwegian cinema has received international reg- recognition. The doc- documentary film Kontiki from 1950s won the first Academy Award for Norway and the 24th Academy Awards for Best Documentary Feature. Since 1990, there has been a boom in Norwegian film industry, as well as a persistent use of Norway as a shooting location. For mm. one particular glacier, Hardanger, er, Hardanger's Glacier... <laughs> uh, I, what's do, the do you want to pronounce for, this, that for us, Jan? Hardanger. Hardanger. Um, <laughs> um, I, I saw that word and, and my heart dropped. I forgot I put it in there. <laughs> it's got the O with the slash through it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, that glacier uh, has been used in a number of films. Which Ooh. of these movies did not use Hardanger Glacier as a shooting location? Okay. A, Snowpiercer. Ooh, B, Golden Compass. C, Emperor, Empire Strikes Back. D, Die Another Day, James Bond, the Pierce Brosnan one. Okay. Or E, Spies Like Us. I'm going to go with Golden Compass. Golden Compass did have a shooting location at Hardinger Glacier. Uh, it, remember, it's a glacier, so it's a snowy movie. Yeah. Yeah. I guess all of these are snowy movies. Yeah. That's probably why I picked the one that I picked. <laughs> all right. You lost that one, you loser. <laughs> Jan, which one was not used as a shooting location? Uh, a, Snowpiercer. C, Empire Strikes Back, D, Die Another Day, or E, Spies Like Us? I'm going to go with Empire Strikes Back. No, that's also incorrect. Uh, go, 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 go. Um, the, uh, the Hoth fight scene in Empire was shot uh, on, the, on the glacier. Uh, Golden Compass is like all in snow, so I think a lot of that was shot over there. And then, I always thought all of, uh, all of them of Empire was like sets. Nope. I didn't realize any nope. of it was actually filmed anywhere real. Yep. It's crazy what happens when you look uh, at, at Wikipedia. Um, and then Spies Like Us, there's a big snow scene. So it's actually Snowpiercer. Ah, that was my second guess. Damn yeah. it. I actually right. put it's that... Great movie, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I put that in it. hoping that Chris would pick it um, because he likes that movie. I love that movie. Um, okay. Uh, so Chris won that round, so you get to take over and, and choose the category. All right. What, what do we got left for categories? We have sports. Nope. Science and technology. Probably not. And geography. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, science. Science. Okay. <laughs> Uh, science. Okay. Norwegian science. Norway, <laughs> Norway is a country f- known for its contributions to science and technology. Feels like mathematics and architecture are where they shine. Some of the items you use in your everyday life have been designed by Norwegian engineers. Which of the following was not invented in Norway? The aerosol can by no one, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I was about to reveal whether it's real or not. (laughs) Um, The cheese slicer, the uh, salmon sushi, postage meter, or the snowboard. Hmm. All right, so it's not going to be the snowboard because that's that's a that's too extreme. That's that's U.S. extreme stuff. I think. No, no, the question is which is not. Which is not. Yes. Oh, snowboard. Oh, dang! You got it. I didn't know that you would Ah. know that. (laughs) Uh. The reason why I picked the snowboard was because telemark skiing and possibly cross-country skiing was invented in Norway. Really? Yep. But also aerosol can, uh, the cheese slicer, the good one, the one that like shaves a piece off. Yep. Um, salmon sushi, 
also uh basically salmon sushi really well what it was is I, that i misheard you i thought it was something you said something else that was supposed to be the trick one um yeah. salmon uh was actually never used in sushi it was actually look uh said to be like gross they didn't like it in japan yeah. and then uh, in like the 70s it 1974 like yeah. they there was an uh, an initiative to use uh salmon to stimulate the the norwegian fish market oh cool yeah. um okay uh so then we're moving on to yawn for science and technology <laughs> this one's a little point yep. this one's a little pointed so um get ready <laughs> um okay <laughs> <laughs> all right dude Jeff Bezos is the oh, world's Jesus. richest man and was named by the International Trade Union Federa- Confederation the world's worst boss because, as, a gener- as the General Secretary Sharon Burrow said, Jeff Bezos represents the inhumanity of employers who are promoting the North American corporate model. One of the things he has come under fire for is the use of technology to monitor the productivity of his workers, pushing them the working conditions from exploitative to near hu- inhumane. And he's on the soapbox now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's net worth is roughly 15 billion US dollars. If Jeff's personal wealth was ranked next to the entire nation's wealth, which would he be just in front of in nominal GDP? A. Lebanon. B. Dominican Republic. <laughs> C. <laughs> New Zealand. D. Portugal. Or E. Hungary. <laughs> Remember, this oh, is this one. <laughs> Remember, this is just one man. <laughs> uh, I have to take a wild guess. Hungary. Yes. Very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is worth the same as fucking Hungary. Jeff Bezos is worth more than Hungary. Good <laughs> Lord. If Jeff Bezos was a country at this very moment, he would be the 55th richest country in the world. <laughs> Remember, he's just one man. Wow. Yeah. We need to break his head with a rock. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm glad that you guys uh, indulged. I was I was thought that was kind of risky. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So you guys are tied, I believe. Right? Yeah, because you guys both got the questions. In the, oh, no. Jan is by, behind by one because of the, t- one, the TV one. one. Okay. All right. We got to fix well, this game he's, then. He's, he's Jan's got to win. <laughs> well, no. He's, he's about to win because if it's sports or geography, I'm kind of fucked. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's Jan's pick. Would you like geography or sports? Uh, Let's go for geography. Geography, okay. American geography for 100. (laughs) This is for 10,000 points. (laughs) The United States is big. The land area of the U.S. is approximately 3,800,000 square miles. Of this land area, 22% of it belongs to Alaska. Alaska, however, is the third most sparsely populated state in the United States. Which of the following is least populate is the least populated state uh, based on total population? So basically, which of these states has the fewest amount of people in it? Hmm. This is going to be a home run for you because you know all 50 states. (laughs) Okay, all right. Just think of the one that's um, the worst. (laughs) <laughs> the worst <laughs> a a vermont b no. north Sorry. dakota c wyoming hmm. d delaware e rhode island uh rhode island no that is incorrect hmm. rhode incorrect. island has a million people in it apparently <laughs> yeah. a small place small place million yeah. people <laughs> all right chris is it vermont north dakota wyoming delaware oh um, um, Wyoming. Wyoming is correct. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Chris might have an advantage because he is my brother and he probably knows which way I'm leaning with these questions. Yes. <laughs> I think that you're seeing my tricks and that's the, the issue here. Uh, no, not really. I think, I think Jan's going to win this. I'm yeah, I think it. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final category, sports. The one that I'm sure everybody... Do you want to do uh, uh, Norwegian geography? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you, <laughs> should, you, yes. should be, you should be the host. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, Chris. Okay. Norway is a Nordic country in the northeastern... Uh, in northwestern Europe. Those territory... Uh, whose territory... Jeez, I'll start again. I'm sorry. <clears throat> din, 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 din. Norway is a Nordic country in the northwest uh, in Europe. Oh, God. 
whose territory comprises the western and north mo- northernmost portion of the Scandinavian peninsula. Norway claims many of the most northern items in the world, but which of these items is not the northmost item belonging to Norway? This you'll make sense in a second. Okay. Does Norway have the most north active volcano? Does Norway have the mo- northmost discovered shipwreck? The northmost nude beach? The northmost doll museum or the northmost <laughs> pizzeria in the world. Oh wow! Um, and it's which one they don't have. It's which one they don't have. They don't have. So they have like the majority of these things. They have the majority of these things. Wow! <laughs> Norway, <laughs> Norway rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um. I'm gonna go with volcano. That is incorrect. Oh. Wait, actually, that yeah, that doesn't make sense. That makes sense that they have. <laughs> yep. What the? Oh, okay, I don't know. Don't have. It doesn't have to be hot to have a volcano. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Beerenberg is the name of the volcano. It's in Jan Mayor, Norway. I think I might have done that in like a Spanish pronunciation. Mm. <laughs> okay, uh, Jan, is it? Does Norway claim the northmost known shipwreck? The northmost Nude Beach, the Northmost Doll Museum, or the Northmost Pizzeria? Uh, oh, does does not have. Sorry, yeah. Which yeah, one? Which yeah, one doesn't yeah. belong to Norway? Uh, Going to claim all things uh, most north. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I've never heard about uh, most of these things, but uh, I'm going to go for the Nude Beach because no one want to go <laughs> to the beach in the north of Norway. <laughs> That is not correct, unfortunately. Uh. It's in oh, uh, K. <laughs> Jones. Uh, it's it's <laughs> K, K. J. The O with the slash through L N E S, which is in <laughs> Berlevag, Norway. Um, Berlevag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I just should just stop. I should just yeah. stop. Yeah. I got to get Google Translate out here to do the the yeah. uh, vocalizations. Yeah, the actual answer was the. Uh, uh, northmost known shipwreck actually belongs to Canada in mm. Navan- well, Of course, of yeah. course. Nunavut, Canada. Um, yeah. It's near Beachy Island, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it was just something I got from Wikipedia. Yeah, so you guys have the Northmost Pizzeria, Doll Museum, Nude Beach, and Active Volcano. Yeah. It's pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, there's a lot of stuff in, in <laughs> Svalbard. Um, yeah. Uh, because that's where most of the Northmost stuff was located. Yeah. Um, okay, so final round, we got sports, baby. I'm sure that both of you are real sport heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, not so much. No, dude, podcasters and visual artists are all about yeah. sports, baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, Chris, why don't you go first on this one? Okay. Uh, okay, Norwegian sports. <clears throat> Sports are a central part of Norwegian culture. Norway has competed in and won medals in all Olympic games it's oh, okay. participated yeah, in in, in 1990. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please name every single one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Norway has hosted the Winter Games twice, once in Oslo in 1952 and once in Lillehammer in 1994. List the following teams from most to least medals won at the Winter Games for all time. It really doesn't matter because they stack up the same way if you do gold, silvers, and, oh, and bronzes. Okay. Okay. So which one of these is the basically? I'll, I'll just take which one is the highest. Okay. Which one's the highest for what? Um, okay. So we have Canada for the Winter Games. For Winter Games. Total medal count. In Norway. Uh, no, not in Norway. Just in general. Throughout in general. throughout time in memoriam. Okay. okay. So Canada, USA, Norway, Germany, and Austria. Um, actually, I'm gonna make you rank them. It, it's we're, we're coming up on time. That's the only thing I want to say. You do it. You do it for me now. <laughs> uh, okay. Number one is what? Uh, USA. Okay. Off to a bad start. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> number two is what? Canada. Okay. Number three is Norway. Number four is I don't know. Remember the other countries? Germany and Austria. Uh, Germany. And number five is Austria. Okay. And then I'm going to take Jan's answer, and we're going to see who's closer. All right, Jan, uh, who's number okay. one in, in, in Winter Olympics medals? I'm going to say Norway on top. And and, uh, okay, and yeah, then number, number two? 
and then uh, uh, what's it? U- yeah, U.S. I don't know, second. Okay, and then you've got Canada, Germany, and Austria remaining. And then Canada and the, uh, Germany, and then Austria was uh, the last one. Okay, you. So you you misplaced. Canada and Austria. If you switch those two, you're you're in the right order. But you got it right because Norway is number one, baby, yeah. by a huge margin. <laughs> really? A yeah. huge yeah. margin. Yeah. Really, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, three, they're insane. <laughs> three sixty-eight uh, total medals, one thirty-two gold, as compared to the U.S., which is the next closest one. Number two is three hundred five total medals and one hundred five gold. So that's like. Wow. That's like a couple years worth of medals yeah, in between Jesus the two. Jesus Christ, that's yeah. crazy. Um, and then after the USA, we've got Germany, then Austria, and then Canada. What about the Russians? The Russians, I think, yeah, are number six, okay. I think. Because I think, if they were on there, we probably would put them up higher. Yeah, I wonder, I think that there might be some issue with the breakup of the Soviet Union. Yeah, I think that that interrupts oh, yeah. it. The Soviet period, yeah. Should have never, <laughs> never broken up. <laughs> yeah, you got to protect okay. that medal count. <laughs> All right. Final question for you, Jan. Sports in America. I'm sure something that you follow very closely. Very, very good. Don't worry, neither do I, man. <laughs> this one, this is, is, I like this one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you like this one, I, I like these questions. I wrote them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the United States of America is a country that enjoys play, uh, playing, but mostly spectating sports. Roughly 18.6 million people watch Sunday night football weekly. Which is even more than the Big Bang Theory, by only Ba-dum-bum. by only fifty thousand people. <laughs> it says a lot about our culture. Yeah, it does. Many now international sports have been created in the United States. Which of the following is not a sport created in the United States? A. Volleyball. B. Disc golf. C. Cowboy bowling. D. Cowboy bowling. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Basketball. And E. Pickleball. What the fuck is pickleball? <laughs> you can't just take an object and put it in front of in front of ball and then decide it's a fucking sport. Listen, we're from New York. You want to go down to the corner and play a little pickleball? No, I don't want to play the pickleball. Yeah, hey, we, we don't get a p- problem with pickle cucumbers. What's your problem? Oh, All right, so is it volleyball, disc golf, bowling, cowboy bowling rather, basketball, or pickleball? Uh, I'm going to go for that. All the strange ones are from the states, and then volleyball. It's, uh, volleyball was created in the United States, uh, unfortunately. Chris, fuck, uh, pickleball. Pickleball was also invented in the United yeah, States. Uh, it's named after the guy who made it, Joel Pritchard's dog, whose name is Pickle. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> kind of like <laughs> wiffle ball and badminton, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I made up God. cowboy bowling. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jan wins. <laughs> Jan wins. <laughs> well, it turns out the actual competition was who had the most winter game um, uh, medals, <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. Norway wins. Yeah, yeah. Norway wins. <laughs> Sorry, it was doomed uh, from the start. All right, guys. Yep. We wrap Folks, this up here. If you're still listening, thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Jan, thank you yes. so much so, for coming dude, on. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. You're, you're great, dude. Yeah. Great talking to you. Um, yeah. wh- where, where's the easiest place to find you? Your Instagram, right? Yeah, Instagram uh, is the best one. Uh, yeah, slash Jan Eriksson. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And uh, there'll be some links on our stuff uh, uh, pointing uh, pointing in Jan's direction. If you yeah. don't already watch his stuff, which you probably do. You need to watch Jan's videos every day. They will make you a better person. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> Jan, anything else? Oh, jeez. Sorry, sorry. Uh, anything else you want, you want to plug, Jan? No, that, that, that's fine. Uh, yeah, people can also try to follow my YouTube, maybe, and that probably be more on that one uh, you know, in, in a few months. So, cool. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Keep on destroying, Jan. All right. Thank- I will. I will. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank, thanks yeah. a lot. Now, folks, yeah. thanks for listening, and uh, be nice to each other. Jan Erisen. Jan Erisen. <laughs> 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 <la